cheaters. Every competitive game has them, and Marble Blast is no exception. As it turns out, it's actually really easy to perform exploits in the game, so many players have attempted to fake their way to achieving records. The only issue is, it's somewhat easy to catch. So in most instances, a player couldn't get very far before being banned. The story of Tyler DC is one of those cases. His record of 7.6 seconds on Mountaintop Retreat raised several questions, as nobody thought this sort of time was even possible. Luckily, the playback of each world record is automatically uploaded, so mods were able to inspect the game to see if the run was in fact legit. The playback itself was... interesting, to say the least. Either Tyler DC had unlocked the anti-gravity DLC, or the more logical option was that he had cheated. Wouldn't you know it, he got banned shortly after, but not before putting up quite the defense. While it might be easy to cheat in Marble Blast, it definitely isn't easy to do it convincingly. With a verification system in place for both online and offline runs, it takes more than just a gravity hack to fool the moderators and the general player base. With that considered, what happens when a player with an extensive knowledge of the ins and outs of Marble Blast tries to cheat? Well, one player pondered that same question, and they would end up sending the entire community on a wild goose chase, with them setting dozens of records along the way. This is the story of Theodore. After joining the community in 2019, he remained somewhat of a lurker, before breaking through several months later in June with his first world record. This was an interesting choice for a first record, as with a time of 2.779, it was already incredibly optimized beforehand. The level itself involved going in a basically straight line, so any time cuts were from incredibly precise tweaks at the very beginning of the level. This showed that Theo's skill set ran incredibly deep, with the tricks employed not all being surface knowledge. His second record, though, would definitely blow everyone away. Now, the level in question is interesting. As the name suggests, certain aspects of the level are entirely random. Upon reaching a power-up box, a player has an equal chance to get any power-up in the game, including the time travel power-up, which freezes the timer for about 5 seconds. Because of this, the record itself took incredible luck, more so than just about any level in the game. Despite this, Theodore took on the challenge, taking down the only record left in 2014. All of a sudden, things were shifting from who the hell is Theodore to how is Theodore this good? Behind the scenes though, an investigation was quickly unfolding. Everything leading up to this point appeared to show that this wasn't Theodore's first time getting Marble Blast records. His ability to obtain record after record on some of the most optimized levels was a massive eyebrow raiser, coupled with his apparent refusal to communicate with the rest of the community. It seemed as if his lucky streak would continue, and this was especially the case for his Gem Hunt records. Gem Hunt is quite the unique Marble Blast game mode. Rather than the typical time attack, Gem Hunt revolves around patches of gems spawning around the map, each with different values attributed to the gems. This is once again entirely random, and so the player has to navigate the map while collecting these gems as efficiently as possible before the timer reaches zero. There is some definite skill involved, and the multiplayer side of this game mode backs that up. But given a large enough sample size of games, it's easy to see how a player could snag a record or two. It's a bit surprising then, when a player such as Theodore is able to snag nearly all the top scores ever recorded on a given gem hunt level, including getting the world record on gem finding folly by almost 40 points. Theodore was starting to cement his legacy as a potential Marble Blast grade. It wasn't often that a player could step into the scene and get record after record shortly after. With Theo building his massive catalog of records, moderators were able to parse through that same sample size of runs. While it isn't feasible for Theodore to be using blatant movement cheats without red flags immediately appearing, it was possible for him to be a bit more devious. To investigate further, Moz began to pick apart his individual runs, with the game's most notable tasser, Dom, also stepping in. One category of levels that Theodore was particularly proficient in was the incredibly optimized straight line levels. These levels had time separated by thousands of seconds, but there were still viable strategies that could be used to get to the end faster. These strategies include the ability to quickly lock the camera into the optimal diagonal position, how quickly the movement keys are held, jump timing, 
the frame perfect releases required to perform a speed increase with the natural bounce mechanic, as well as other aspects which vary on a level to level basis. Upon further investigation, something was definitely up with the start of Theodore's runs. His camera almost immediately locked into place, and his first inputs were always frame perfect. This alone was pretty fishy, but the fact that it was seen in 100% of his runs was also very clearly a red flag. This had a few potential sources, including the potential of a macro that replicated the same sequence of inputs at the start of each run. This alone would give him a significant advantage as is, as Theodore would be starting the level basically in line with the task. With all this considered, the mods had no other choice but to take action. While the methodology behind how the moderators discovered his cheating wasn't disclosed, there were still some questions about several of his runs. In particular, his gem hunt records were questioned shortly after the ban. As of now, there appears to be no way to actively manipulate RNG in the online mode of Platinum Quest. This means that those records do have the potential to be legit, but this opens up an entirely different can of worms. Was Theodore an alt? This question had been floated around early on, but nobody could confirm it. Theodore chatted so little in the Marble Blast Discord server that his identity couldn't really be picked apart. His mechanics resembled that of a veteran player, and he had a very deep knowledge of the game. None of that seemed to matter though, as he entered and exited the community in just a matter of months. You'd think that the story would end there, but well, of course not. Just recently, Theodore uploaded on a seemingly dormant YouTube channel, posting a time that he claimed to be the world record on the level Super Bounce. This was also coupled with a very angry description. Surprisingly, despite the seemingly damning evidence, Theodore continues to claim that he's innocent. Hopefully he'll be able to back up his superhuman reaction times with proof that he's some sort of speedrun marble wizard, but I doubt it. For now, it'll remain a mystery, and Theo's legacy will be tarnished forever.